talking because I can't hear anything then. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, so, we hear, but we can't hear anything. Yeah, not at the level of a uh, voice in the room. In the, in the okay, well, I'll, I'll put my face right to the mic. Got my nose. Uh, uh, okay, can I have the text like So hopefully now you can see a vague outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to start just by giving you a quick introduction to small talk, which maybe some of you can see through, some of you will find interesting. And then I'll get on to what this talk is actually about, which is the pragmatic small talk implementation that we now have in the cloud. So if I can have the next slide. The small talk family dates back to around 19. Uh, 67, I guess, maybe not probably correct me on this, for the first initial thoughts on the subject. Uh, the final version of the standard was really worked out in 1980s, the language that I guess all the new step developers are familiar with, because it's a language that inspired the creation of the objective scene. But there are lots of other branches in this family that itself was. Uh, Self was a version of small talk that kept the same sort of syntax to the rid of classes, and it became very, uh, very simple as a language. There was really nothing much that was fixed in the behavior of the language. Everything else could be added um, as part of the language. And Self has one very popular descendant, which is JavaScript. JavaScript inherits most of the language from Self, but it adds a number of parents gummy syntax on top of that. If you really weird fornicate to the behaviors that have never tried implementing JavaScript, some of the things in the specification make you scratch your head onto what they were smoking. Um, if I can move on to the next slide. So, in small talk, there are basically Two main bits of syntax. There's assignment, which uses this colony called ping. So you have a variable on the left and then some expression on the right. I guess we're all familiar with assignment in various programming languages, and that's any ML program is reported in most. Um, and the other thing is message sending. And this looks exactly like message sending in Objective C, which is not a fact that it's Objective C, which so is always what it is. So, the only difference is there are no square brackets because the square brackets in Objective C are there to distinguish between C like syntax and syntax, while in small talk, obviously, everything is small talk like syntax. So, you have three types of message. You have numeric messages, which are just a message name that take no arguments, messages with one parameter, messages with multiple parameters which have a bit of this selector in between uh, each of the components. And I guess no one's confused or surprised by this syntax. No, okay, so if we can move on to the next slide. No problem for Sorry, did someone speak? Yeah, just that we were on the flow control side. Just another kind of 
literal, like not the literal, so straight literals that you get in your game to see. They're just um, turned into an object when either runs. And this object is put in block of glass and it responds to a value message. So the, if you look at the display, the, the, the bottom of the side, you can see how you can use this to implement something like a wire loop. So this would be a method that would be implemented on the block closure object itself, which is a while true method, uh, which takes the loop body as an argument and it just returns the result of first sending the value message to itself and then sending an if true message to the result of that with uh, the loop body. So this looks kind of complicated. It's basically a definition of a while of the loop. And that may be its terms of an inductive statement, which is just a single and it's just there, I guess, confusion to the community is just the fact that you can just really free to look for things before without needing to have anything actually that I don't do anything. That's actually not any kind of magic. There's no special one. There is a special code of fire. That's just optimization. There doesn't need to be a special code of fire to recognize messages as Boolean um, objects. So all you need is two subclasses of this Boolean class, a true class, and a false class. And the true class implements this if true message by sending a value message to the <laughs> argument. And the false one implements it by doing nothing. So then, if you want to do any kind of conditional, you get a, mes a method that returns an instance, either true or false. And then all of this conditional flow control works. And it's kind of, if you've used this, this is kind of the exact opposite of this. This defines all of this kind of message sending into that the functions and uh, small talk is exactly as expressive, but it works from the opposite end, defining the kind of things that you get free in this in terms of the kind of things that you would define yourself in this. So, next slide, please. So Objective-C, I guess, is a language that most people in this room are familiar with. Can I just have a show of hands? Is there anyone here who's not used Objective-C? Okay, one person. Oh, um, so Objective-C is basically the bastard offspring of C and Smalltalk. It's what you try and get if you squish C and Smalltalk together into a single language. It's really easy for C programmers to learn because it's basically half a dozen syntactic extensions. And it's really easy for small talk programmers to learn because it's basically just as much C syntax scattered over their small talk programmers. But it's not small talk. It, it has not object type, which small talk does. And small talk is a pure object oriented language. It has nothing which is not an object. Objective-C has these primitive flow control structures which can't be replaced by the user. Um, and small talk doesn't, it just has the uh, message sending primitive. And Objective-C is a little bit faster than small talk. Small talk, the reason Objective-C was created was that small talk was too slow for use on the really cheap machines that were available in the early 80s. I guess now that's less of a problem because popping calculators are faster than machines that were the high end workstations when the small talk was created. But it's still an advantage if you've got something that's processor intensive, Objective C is. I was going to say it's faster, it is possible to write code in Objective C and it's possible that it's faster than person's small talk. It's also possible to write really slow code, you can use a stupid algorithm and you get slower code in Objective C using a sense of algorithm. And get writing the code in small talk. So, uh, one of the little examples I have to learn is how to play some Fibonacci sequence. And I have an implementation in small talk which uses a sensible loop based implementation and a version in uh, Objective C which uses an IE branching recursively calculating each subtree version. And by the time you get to around the 20th Fibonacci number, the uh, 
There's also a command line tool, ETLC, which might make dynamic language compiler, which is a small compiler driver for uh, compiling running language in programs. And this does a few little bits of syntactic sugar, so it can strip out the uh, hash estimation bar lying at the top of the file. So you can use this uh, to run shell scripts in small talk using the uh, the new stack frameworks and it supports loading bundles so you can put it in a dot app bundle it does a little bit of hacking to make the main bundle um, method for NS bundle and return the bundle that was passed and so we now have the ability to write applications purely in small talk with no need to compile them at all you just distribute the dot app bundle and as long as language within the small talk and the DLC are installed on the target machine you can just double click on the workspace or open the window there and that will just work. So, next slide, please. So, one of the aims for this was to try and keep it small because small is easy to debug and easy to test and easy hopefully for other people to understand. And this slide, assuming that what you see and what I see have been kept in sync, this slide should be showing you exactly how big this is. So, if I start at the bottom, the total amount of code produced uh, as part of this whole thing, so language kits for all, all the runtime support, is just under a thousand times of code. And for that in perspective, the new Objective C runtime library is about 1200 times of code. So, this all the new stuff is less code than we have in heritage with the old So it's kind of small. Uh, the small talk specific bit to under a house line code that includes other and the round times or line. And it's about almost a third of that is actually more than the third. I just wish I had the lobbies.
module structures that the runtime likely understands and expects to get from the code that's generated from Objective-C. So there's no virtual machine, there's no bridging layer, there's no overhead for sending messages from Objective-C to Smalltalk or from Smalltalk to Objective-C. There's just a really small runtime layer. Uh, next slide, please. So a lot of people will have asked, uh, when I go to call this to us, can I keep saying ever? And the reason for this is that a lot of the way it works is by using the type selector information that the GNU runtime has, the Twilight runtime has, and the Apple runtime doesn't have. So with the GNU runtime, every selector has a name and a type associated with that. And you can get this information really easily at runtime. You can uh, use all the nice introspection stuff to find out exactly what types a method expects. So in small talk, everything is an object, and that's fine. You can just pass objects around between small talk methods, and that's great. But often, when you're calling object to feed code, then one or more of the parameters you want to pass will be an integer or structure or something like that. So all integer types are boxed as this special small int primitive in uh, language kit. And this is a sort of pseudo object which is um, is basically an integer that's stored in a pointer, so the least significant bit is set to one. And when you want to perform any arithmetic with it, you just right shift it one, do the arithmetic, and then shift it and <coughs> And all of those methods are implemented as very short C functions that compile to LLVM bit code. And then when you want to perform any of those operations, the compiler just generates calls to those functions and then LVM inlines them before code generation. For more complex types like structures, they're all boxed in the sub like the dynamics of the And then we use the standard methods like uh, in value or rect value or point value, set to whatever the object is, uh, together as Pass, for example, a string to some of the things back, an integer, uh, floating point when you crack that you but it's not like you and the compiler will say, ah, I know this is an object, so to unbox it, I send it a new value message, and to do that, as long as the object wants, uh, as long as the object implements an new value method that returns an int, then it'll all work. So you can use strings and integers and stuff all interchangeably and automatically. Uh, next one. So there are a couple of things that were difficult about implementing small talk uh, with the native compiler using the runtime. And the first one of these is blocks. Small talk uses blocks everywhere. They're first class objects and they need to be created fast because pretty much everything you do in small talk involves blocks. And the other one is non-local returns. And these are a really messy feature of small talk where if you have a return statement in a block, then when it's encountered, the method where the block was declared returns, so you need to do some stack unwinding. And I'll talk just quickly about each of those. If I can have the next slide. So this little code snippet is how you perform a math operation in pragmatic small talk. This array, by the way, is an NS array. We've got certain categories on NS array which implement some of these methods. And that's what the small talk support library that I listed on the light count slide was all about. So this takes a block which needs one argument as its argument. And it sends it two messages. It sends it a value message from each um, entry in the array in turn. And then it creates a new array which takes the result of this block um, as a translation. So, well, uh, that's not so interesting. The problem is that when you're doing this kind of thing a lot, you need to be able to create more blocks fast. And if we had to do a heap allocation every single time this happened, that would be really painful. So, every time you create a block later on, it's compiled to a function, and the function expects the block as its first 
arguments. And that's just like any other method that objects have seen. So, uh, uh, the block object itself, we allocate on stack, and that's fine. And we can also put on the stack a context object which stores all of the logos. And I can have the next slide. The reason that becomes a problem is that now you have an object which someone might want to retain allocated on the stack. So what happens if you pass a block as an argument to a method and the receiver says, OK, I'm going to store that in an instance variable then, or maybe you just store it in the brain or something. And then your method returns, and that frame is popped off the stack. And the next time you try and use it, you just erase it from a random stack location that's now not contained in your object. So that's kind of a problem. Um, and the solution to that is now, whenever you send a retain message to the block object, uh, the block is copied immediately. But if you remember from the last slide, the block itself is a stateless object. All it does is have a point to the context. The context is where all of the variables are stored. So we do some ISO swizzling there so the stack block context, which is the class of the context allocated on the stack, is changed. And a pointer to the block object is stored from somewhere else on the stack. Then when this node returns, the block context is promoted onto the heap and it all keeps working. So the as variables being accessed on the stack, they're local, they're very fast. And when you move them off the stack, then um, they slow down. That only happens when you send a retain message to the block. So it's still quite cheap. And um, next slide, please. So the other difficult thing I mentioned was these non local returns. So you can often see methods like this when you have some governance clause where you have a condition which shouldn't be true or should be true. You send it in through a message and then you return it. So this would be just like an objective C you said, if some condition return true. And that's fine an objective C because all of those statements are in the same context. But in small talk, this return true statement that has a simple method when it's return and it's in one's confusing methods. Um, this return true statement should return from the method, not just from the block. So the way we can do that is to have a new exception handling personality function, which is part of the language command. So with the new zero cost exception handling APIs that are appearing in most units like systems now, and they originally came from the table places when they were well supported on there. Um, they let you associate a personality function with every stack frame. This is just stored in the debugging metadata that's in the object code. And this is called by the online code <laughs> and it says this is some exception pointer. Unwind this stack for this frame and if this uh, if this exception should be handled by this frame, then handle it correctly. And that's all this new function does. We just define a new kind of exception, which is only understood by small talk code. And this is used in the normal returns. And we can still catch uh, Objective C exceptions by using small talk style exception handling where we send to the on exception message to the block. Uh, it's not exception do message, so it takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the exception, the second one is the name of the block, and it is a block that's not sorry. And if the exception happens to one executing the block which the receiver, then it invokes the block which the exception handle. So the downside of this non local return approach is that it's really slow. But the upside is that it's only slow when you actually use it. And most codes tend to use this kind of thing for the same sort of thing you use exceptions for using the guard clauses and other things that are in the code very often. So next slide, please. So that's probably just enough detail about the language implementation to really confuse right now. The more interesting thing we have about this program is when it's not true, it needs lots of people to go and find all the bugs. That is what we can do with this.
will be today is reading plant applications, uh, the melody application, which Eric's been working on, uh, is a music jukebox application which we'll talk about the Hispanic. So it uses all of the Hispanic libraries for the store and so they Which lets you look at classes, the categories on the classes, 
before I ask questions, a uh, few people who I should mention who have worked on this. Obviously, I've been doing some work on this. I wrote the initial uh, code generator, the Afghanistan Index Tree, and a really, really bad small talk parser, which may be a bit long, repeatedly. Charles has written a small talk parser now, which actually works, which is a massive improvement. Gunther uh, has written a test suite. Nicholas has been writing the ID, and Eric's written the first two applications in small talk uh, for as well. One of them written the entirely in small talk. He's been working on the photo manager application, uh, which is a pure small talk application. So there's no compiled code anywhere that you don't need to make it, you can just pop it in the app So, questions? Any questions? What I was thinking is maybe we uh, um, uh, we uh, prepare a, a replacement talk for tomorrow and maybe uh, merge the, this one, uh, a short version of this one with the Etoile uh, Status talk. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I just got a question. What happens with the dynamic quality of small talk if you compile it? Is it still there or will it get frozen somehow? I can't hear people who want to hear the mic that I'm not sure if you can still be there. I want to know if um, Smalltalk gets, if you compile it, if it's get, if it gets, if it, if it, if it loses the dynamicality. Uh, yeah, so if you, if you compile Smalltalk, what is the the impact of the on the dynamic aspects of the language? Uh, none, actually. None. The JIT uh, file code and the static uh, file. All the dynamic stuff we get comes from runtime introspection. So you still have uh, message sending dynamically, you still have method replacement dynamically, you still have. Uh, Okay. Uh, you still have all the same type of information. There's nothing lost in the same uh, The only thing you lose, of course, is the source code. If you don't put the source code in the bundle, you can't plug it and introspect it. Do other things. So, one thing that I'm planning on adding very soon is the ability to create a shared object file uh, from a small talk bundle when it's loaded by language for the first time. And then, and as long as it hasn't changed, just load the object code from the last time. So we get a nice cache of that. You can do that way. I don't know if you have small talk questions, I can answer them uh, locally. Uh, and that's, that's a problem. And then maybe I will, uh, yeah, I will prepare a, a version of this talk for uh, tomorrow and try to uh, be able to uh, answer more questions uh, about it. Already. Okay, with that. Okay, thank you.